Hey, what is up guys? My name is Eric and in today's episode, I'm going to be teaching you about functions in C++. Let's do this. Okay, so before we begin, I want to let you know ahead of time that because functions is a huge topic and it's a very important one, I'm going to be splitting this topic into several episodes, okay? So in today's episode, I'm going to be just simply going over what a function is and how to create one. Okay, so what is a function anyways? A function is basically a way to group several lines of code together to that will perform a single goal or task. One of the benefits of using a function is so that you don't have to repeatedly type the same lines of code over and over again to perform a certain task. Not only that, by creating functions, you get to organize your code nicely into groups where you can easily manage them. Okay, so if you haven't noticed already, ever since episode one, we have been staring at a function this entire time, and that is the main function, which is right here. Now, when it comes to functions, it could come in different forms. And by different forms, I mean this. Well, before we talk about that, let's look at what the structure of a function looks like. So to declare a function, first off, type, give it the return type, followed by the name of the function, name of function, and then a pair of parentheses, and then a pair of curly brackets. And then inside the parentheses, you might have parameters which is dependent on your case. And then inside the curly brackets, you type in your statements to run and followed by a return value of the same type as the return type, okay? And then a semicolon. Now, if your return type is a void, which means it will not return any value when you call or run that function, then you don't need this return statement. Okay, so let's create our own function. So let's say we wanted to create a function where if we were to call this function, it will print our name stored in a string variable. So to do that, let's first create our string variable. So remember to include your string library. Okay, next we're gonna create a string variable outside of all of our functions. So that way, our own function right here can access the variable. So this is considered a global scope. So let's say string name, okay? And let's initialize right away, Eric. Okay, so in this case, let's keep things simple and use a void function for now. In a future video, I will be showing you how to use a function that is not a void type. Okay, so because we're using a void function, we're gonna not need this return statement. So delete that, and now let's give it a name. So let's call it um, get name, or rather, let's say print name. And then the parameters, let's leave it empty for now just to keep things simple. Again, I'm gonna show you an example of a function that uses parameters in a future video. Okay, so inside the print name, let's see out the name. So see out, name, and line. So if we were to compile, actually before we do that, we have to call the function in the main function, otherwise it will not run. So print name. So that's how you call a function. You basically type in the name, followed by a pair of parentheses and a semicolon. Now you could call any of your functions from other places as well, but because we're just keeping it simple and using two functions, which is the main function and our own function, we're just gonna call it inside main. Here's a fun fact. In all C++ programs, there is always at least one function and that is the main function. Without it, the program will not work. Okay, so let's compile and run this program. As you can see, it shows there were build errors. Okay, the, the reason why we're getting build errors is because we did not declare a function prototype. Now what a function prototype is, is basically it's a line of code that tells the program that, hey, later down the line, you're gonna run into something called print name, okay? And print name is basically something that we've created. And I want you to know that, well, I, by typing a function prototype, it'll let the program know that, okay, when you arrive at our function called print name, don't freak out about it because it exists somewhere in the program, okay? Either in a separate file or in this file itself. So in this case, it exists down here. Okay, so when you run into this line of code, find the code that matches up with the print name function and run that. Okay, so to create a function prototype, this is all you have to do. Go outside of your main function and go above it. Type in the return type of your function, which is void, 
followed by the name of the function, a pair of parentheses, and a semicolon. So that way, when the program runs, it'll go from top to bottom. And then finally, when it reaches your function prototype, it'll do what I just explained. And then once it enters the main function, it finally arrives on the line of code where we call the print name function. So because we had a function prototype that notifies the program that, hey, print name is the function we created, it will not freak out. So it will now know how to find this line of code, run the statements inside of it. And once it ends, it'll come back to the main function and run the return value of zero. Okay, so if we we're to run this program, it will now show Eric on the console window. So as you can see, it shows Eric in the console window, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Because when the main function runs or calls the print name function, it'll run the statement C out name and line. And that's what it did. And by and because the string name is global, it will be able to access the values stored inside the name variable and print it out. Okay, so you're probably wondering. So at this point, if we were to create more than one function, that means we would have to create more than one function prototyping line, right? Yes. So for every function that you create, besides the main function, you will have to create a new line of code that will represent the function prototype for that new function. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, what if my program gets way too big, like over a thousand lines of code? That means I could eventually lose track and forget to declare a function prototype. And yes, that is true. Now, one way to counteract this situation is to actually delete the function prototype line of code up here and move your function from down here to up there. So by moving your function to the top of the main function, you are no longer required to type the line of code for a function prototype. So if we were to run this program, it should show us the exact same result that we got. And that is, it shows Eric in the console window. And it does. And with that, this concludes our first part of our C++ functions tutorial. Be sure to stay tuned for the next part where we continue to look more into using functions in other variants, such as adding it a return type as well as giving it parameters. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.